Today, we will discuss important issues involved with the transfer of pyrophoric chemicals. Pyrophoric chemicals are highly reactive with oxygen and moisture. As a result, exposing these chemicals to the open air can cause spontaneous and violent exothermic reactions, which trigger intense fires. Such ignition or combustion occurs without the application of external heat. These dangers are compounded by the fact that pyrophoric chemicals are often dissolved in solvents that are themselves highly flammable. Needless to say, there is a tremendous amount of risk involved when it comes to transferring liquid pyrophoric reagents. The goal of this video is to explain these risks and identify the proper way to handle a pyrophoric chemical. Dustin is completing his doctoral degree in organic chemistry and is an experienced user of pyrophoric chemicals. He will demonstrate how to safely handle these potentially dangerous reagents. New users of pyrophoric reagents must carefully review the written standard operating procedure for pyrophoric reagents and work under the close supervision and direction of an experienced user. Some of the most common types of liquid pyrophoric reagents include organolithium reagents, Grignard reagents, alkyl aluminum reagents, alkyl zinc reagents, and boranes. Pyrophoric liquids usually come in a solution within a flammable organic solvent such as hexane or pentane and in a glass bottle or steel cylinder. The Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, must always be reviewed before using an unfamiliar chemical. In addition, periodic review of MSDS sheets should be part of your laboratory's safety program to remind users how to safely handle and manage dangerous chemicals. In order to understand the hazards involved, it is especially important to read the relevant MSDS before working with a pyrophoric reagent. When using pyrophoric reagents, you must set up your work in a laboratory fume hood or glove box. Be sure to remove any nearby flammable or combustible materials from the work area to avoid secondary fires. Always be sure to don the appropriate personal protective equipment or PPE in order to protect your eyes and skin. This step is especially important. A fire resistant lab coat is adequate for handling pyrophoric reagents in a fume hood or glove box, although you may choose to wear a chemical apron as well. Chemical splash goggles or safety glasses must be worn when you are handling or working near pyrophoric chemicals and must meet ANSI standards. Ordinary prescription glasses will not provide proper protection unless they also meet this standard. Nitrile gloves should be adequate for handling small quantities of pyrophoric chemicals. However, remember that nitrile gloves are combustible. Heavier gloves and a chemical apron should be used when working with large quantities of these chemicals. A face shield should be worn any time there is a risk of an explosion or significant splash hazard. Portable shields, which provide protection to all laboratory occupants, are also an acceptable alternative. Last but not least, Open-toed shoes are not allowed in the laboratory under any circumstances. Orient yourself with the location of your laboratory safety equipment, including the emergency eye wash and emergency shower. Being familiar with these facilities will be crucial in the event of a mishap, such as a fire or an exposure to the eyes or skin. Suitable facilities for quick drenching or flushing of the eyes should be within 10 seconds travel time for immediate emergency use. In the event of an emergency, use the eye wash and shower station for at least 15 minutes. Most importantly, know where to find the fire extinguisher and know how to use it. A Class C dry chemical fire extinguisher must be available within 75 feet whenever pyrophoric chemicals are being used. While working with pyrophoric liquids, you must use one of two mechanical engineering devices, a fume hood or a glove box with an inert atmosphere. Pyrophoric transfer processes are not to occur anywhere outside of these two workspaces. While working in the fume hood, make sure that the sash level is at the lowest possible position. Pyrophoric liquid reagents can be transferred by either using a syringe or a double tip needle, also known as a cannula. We recommend using the double tip needle or cannula method if you plan to transfer 10 milliliters of liquid or more. Dustin will first demonstrate transferring the pyrophoric liquid using a syringe. When using this method, first clamp the reagent bottle and receiving vessel to prevent them from moving during the transfer. Next, insert a needle from an inert gas source with a bubbler outlet into the bottle, keeping the needle tip above the liquid level. Remember that the goal of this technique is to equalize the pressure in the reagent bottle. 
Another technique which is not recommended involves using the inert gas pressure to force the reagent into the syringe. However, with this method, you run the risk of blowing the plunger out of the syringe body and spilling out pyrophoric reagent. Next, flush the dry syringe with inert gas. Depress the plunger and insert the needle into the sure seal bottle. For large volume syringes, use a corresponding large gauge needle. Gently pull the plunger to draw liquid into the syringe. Pulling too hard or too fast can cause air bubbles to enter between the plunger and the syringe body. Also note that simple glass syringes are more prone to causing gas bubbles. Disposable plastic syringes have a good seal on the plunger and work well, but glass syringes with Teflon tip plungers are best. To be safest, do not fill the syringe more than 60% full, maxing out at 10 milliliters of liquid. The double tip needle or cannula technique is safer when transferring 10 milliliters or more. For highly pyrophoric materials such as tert-butyl-lithium and trimethyl aluminum, it is best to draw a plug of inert gas from the headspace into the needle. This should occur after excess reagent is forced back into the bottle and before withdrawing the needle. The desired volume of reagent in the syringe is quickly transferred to the reaction apparatus by puncturing a rubber septum. Dustin will now demonstrate the second method for transferring pyrophoric liquid by using the double tip needle or cannula. This technique should always be used when transferring 10 milliliters or more. First, pressurize the sure seal bottle with nitrogen. Then insert one end of the double tip needle through the septum and into the headspace above the reagent. Nitrogen will start passing through the needle. Next, insert the other end of the double tip needle through the septum of the calibrated addition funnel attached to the reaction apparatus. This apparatus must be equipped with a gas line to a bubbler. Now, submerge the needle in the liquid-filled Shore Seal reagent bottle and transfer the desired volume. When you are finished, withdraw the needle to above the liquid level and allow nitrogen to flush the needle. Be careful to remove the needle first from the reaction apparatus and then from the reagent bottle. Now that Dustin has completed the transfer of the pyrophoric reagent, he must clean the reagent from the needles and syringes. This must be done immediately to avoid clogging the needles and seizing the syringes. In order to do this, Dustin will draw hexane into the syringe still containing small amounts of the pyrophoric reagent. He will then discharge the diluted solution into isopropanol. Similarly, he will flush the double tip needles with hexane and then quench the hexane wash in isopropanol. Following the transfer, the disposal of unneeded pyrophoric chemicals must be conducted with the utmost care. First, ensure that any small amount of unused or unwanted pyrophoric materials are destroyed by carefully quenching the residue. Dilute the material with an unreactive solvent, such as heptane or toluene, then discharge the diluted solution into isopropanol. Upon completion, add a more reactive quenching agent, in this case methanol, to completely quench the reagent. Next, add water dropwise to make sure there are no pockets of reactive materials. Finally, dispose of this mixture as hazardous waste. Alternatively, reactive substances can be quenched by slowly adding the dilute solution to dry ice, then adding a mildly reactive quenching agent such as methanol. Avoid low boiling dilutants such as ether or pentane, which tend to condense water upon evaporation. It is extremely important to store pyrophoric chemicals under an inert atmosphere or under kerosene as appropriate. Do not leave containers with residues of pyrophoric materials open to the atmosphere due to uncontrolled ignition. 
Remember to avoid areas with heat, flames, oxidizers, and water sources. Finally, containers carrying pyrophoric materials must be clearly labeled with the correct chemical name and hazard warning. That concludes our demonstration on the safe and proper method for handling pyrophoric chemicals. To summarize, use MSDS sheets to understand the hazards of the chemical you are handling. Always use the appropriate handling procedure for the volume of liquid you are transferring. Make sure you are working in a fume hood or glove box and wearing appropriate personal protective equipment. Know where safety equipment such as fire extinguishers, eye washes and showers are located and know how to use them. Remember that the job is not completed until you clean up your workspace. When working in a lab setting, always be mindful of your health and safety. And remember to practice the safety procedures outlined in this video. E, H, and S. Protecting your health and safety.